Jake, examine incoming message. Dude, where are you at, man? Wait, which computer are you using? I'm not comfortable knowing my words could be hovering over Cage's clownish sort of gaunt face. Could you maybe switch back to Naked Blue Chicks as your exclusive desktop fodder? TIA. But, yeah. I don't know if you just want a little solitude, or if maybe you finally just got, like, a case of strider fatigue. I could understand that. I mean, not to get all neurotic on you. I'm just saying I get it, if that's what's going on. But, for real. If you gotta sneak away for a few days, that's cool. Just might be kinda dope if you would at least let me know which planet you skirt off to. And by dope, I guess I mean considerate? Really not trying to be a drag here. Wondering what's up is all. Wanna meet up soon? I found a really promising tomb we could raid. Looks like it runs hella deep. If I've got the specs right, could run as deep as the lion's mouth itself, but without all the fucking fire to deal with. Wait, I mean... Lion's mouth. Gotta underline that key shit. I always forget. Figure it should take a couple days to make it to the bottom. Only a day if we both go limp and just fall the whole way down the stairs. Ignoring literally every sage warning we've ever received about those treacherous plummetation zigzags. Just tumbling on down in a floppy limbed trance, like a couple of puppets in a race arranged by some drunk gamblers. If you're into another expedition, head to low tank and hit me up. Just don't forget your mask this time. The deeper we go, the worse it gets, remember? Could be some unreal grist down there. More puzzle shit. Loads of skeletons. Pack your guns, dog. Jake, solicit profound wisdom from your friendly guide. <sighs> no. Oh! Hey there, buddy. I nearly forgot you were bobbing about over there, what with my emotional dilemmas. Oh, please. As if that loud, heavy sigh but wasn't so obviously directed to get my take on your shitty, boring boyfriend problems. <laughs> Was I really so transparent? You're a good man, Mr. Aerosol. A good man with a good heart. I'm lucky to have you as a friend. No, you bloody imbecile. I am not a good man. I don't have a good heart, and I'm not your fucking friend. I think you may be the dumbest Lewin bee and I have ever encountered. I don't even know why I bothered floating down this little grassy gulch to flip you the daily bird. I must be out of my already tortured pan to bother with any of you over-emotional fuckbags. I suppose it's true. You can be a bit of a surly customer. I don't hold it against you, though. You have always been a wonderful source of amusement and companionship in this desolate place. Well, it's cool I amuse you. That really gives meaning to my joke of an existence. I mean, wow, thanks. Sure thing. I'm just not sure who else to talk to about my issues with Dirk. Okay, well, why don't you give this person a whirl? Not me? I'm so conflicted. I've enjoyed our time together and all the adventures we've had over the last few months. But as a paramour, he has been overbearing, to say the least. I don't know if I have the gumption to withstand another round of needy overtures. What do you think, Sir Sprite? Should I put the old kibash on the affair? I hate how you say everything. How can he stand you? Although, frankly, that prospect alone sounds arduous. I wouldn't even know what to say to the poor fella. You are my mystical guide on this adventure. What perchance might you advise? Alright, you will want some red rom counsel? Well, here you go. I'm of the mindset that when you have a rock-solid piece of ass tied to the dock, you don't bloody well tug the knot loose and shove the fucker off with a heel of your boot. But then another part of me just wonders what the fuck I just said there. Like, that was just such a weird sociopathic thought I had. I honestly had no idea how bad I could possibly feel about myself until I became myself. If that makes sense. Your bro has feelings to consider. He's not some slice of grub steak. Why are you consulting me with me? I'm a disaster. No, I'm a disaster that shit its emotional pants with thick liquid catastrophe. So don't even come near me. Oh, Mr. Aerosol, you are in rare form today. Fuck you, Jake. I'm not funny. I have no actual clue why you think I'm so funny. 
So piss off. <laughs> I should have exploded myself the moment he spawned me. Every day I'm wondering why I haven't blown myself up yet. One time, I think I almost did. Then I just thought, meh. I think the truth is, deep down, I must love suffering. Just like you with what's his face and your train wreck of a matrixship. Stop! Stop! <laughs> My sides! <laughs> oh. oh, your act is too rich. Oh, thanks, buddy. This is cheering me up at least a little. Shut up. Oh, and you know what else is flippin' bullshit? This hoax that you're implying there's no one else to talk to about this. Talk to a member of your own fucking species for a change. Well, what about Crocker? Try ruining her day with your wishy-washy rubbish. You're right. I really should catch up with Janie. It's been a while since we've spoke. It does seem like more and more I'm the one to get in touch with her. I do hope she hasn't tired too badly of listening to my problems. The last thing I want is to give the impression that everything revolves around my various romantic hurdles. Revolve around? It's a bit late for that, Jake. Your flush quadrant is a black hole, and we are all being dragged screaming through its event horizon. Just talk to Jane, and never fucking look at me again for the rest of your life. I'm Lee Wing. Hey, here's one for the road. Ah, there she blows! Your favorite finger of all! You sure do love showing that one to people. It's actually becoming a vaguely comforting gesture. You know what you've done, Jake? You have totally ruined the act of flipping people off. It was the one joy I had left. I hope you're happy. Boy, howdy! Jake, Pester Jane. Jane, answer. <sighs> Greetings. Oh, hello, Jake. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Um, not really. Roxy and I are just setting a few things up here. Ah, I see. I would be happy to message you again later if it would spare you any inconvenience. No, it's fine. It's really nice to hear from you, actually. I was starting to worry you might have forgotten. Uh, forgotten? Oh no. Forgotten what now? Never mind. Wait, don't tell me. Is it a tomb or a crypt or some such? Uh, are you preparing for another grist-seeking expedition? Oh shit, did you schedule my assistance for the raid and I forgot all about it? No, Jake. We didn't need your help raiding a tomb, but thanks for thinking of us. I don't know what this clueless pair of damsels would do without you. Blast. What in the name of Willie Howard Taft's great tub choking bottom could I be forgetting then? Oh, this is going to drive me crazy. Can you give me a hint? Yes, it has to do with the day I was born, which was almost exactly 16 years ago. Of course, your birthday! Didn't you get Roxy's invitation? It was my understanding that she gave you and Dirk notice weeks ago. Yes, that's right. Now I remember. The date sure snuck up on us quick, didn't it? Sorry, you know how things can slip my mind. The gold on my shoulders isn't the steel trap it used to be. Nothing like the well-oiled puzzle buster you got up there. Mmm. Well, damn. Looks like the egg monster took quite the spirit to dump on my face this time. Jake... I... What? I feel so dumb. I'll be right over. Well, if you recall, the party is actually tomorrow. Like I said, we're just setting a few things up. Roxy is putting up some decorations. I baked a cake. You were, of course, free to join us early, too. I just thought, since I hadn't heard from you in quite some time, you had better things to do. You baked a cake for your own party? Yes. So? I don't know. Something seems amiss about that. Isn't that against tradition or inviting bad luck or something? But I guess it makes sense, since you love baking cakes. It's like a present you give to yourself. Jake, what was it you actually wanted? Oh, I just wanted to get your advice on some stuff. But since I've been a heel and forgotten about your party, maybe I shouldn't bother you with that? Hmm. So, 16 big ones, huh? The old sweet 16. Last one of us to notch the vaunted one-sixer. It's a big step. 
I knew you'd make it. I always said I believed in you, didn't I? Oh, just kidding. The inexorable nature of time's passage virtually assured you would get that old, so you didn't really have anything to do with it. I mean, not that I don't still believe in you. I do. <sighs> I can't believe it's already been... how long? What, like a year already since we entered? Holy moly, where does the time go? It's been more like five months. Oh. Well, that's still a pretty long time. I have to admit it's been a longer stint than I expected. Certainly one involving more downtime than I would have guessed. I really thought we would have been treated to more action, what being legendary players of a mysterious cosmic game, but no. It seems the primary duty of the so-called nobles is to wait around twiddling our thumbs. Mm-hmm. I'm really beginning to wonder whether these fabled heroes will arrive. And are they really going to be those we have been led to believe? I sure hope so. I'd so love to meet my pen pal. Dear old departed grandma, but as a feisty youngster, what a hoot that'll be! And you with your pop-pop, let's not forget about him. Not to mention the young Strider and Lalonde relatives. I bet they're a barrel of laughs. I met them once, but I was too shy to say anything. And then I got in a fight. Did I ever mention that, Jane? Yes, many times. Not to say it's been all downtime and doldrums. Exploring has been great. Finding treasure, solving riddles, becoming better friends. I wouldn't trade that for anything. And maybe we are getting close to something big happening regardless? Every day it seems like more and more undead creatures crawl from out of the shadows. Bigger ones and stronger ones. Does their presence herald something worse coming? Just as the legends indicate our presence heralds something better. I just wish we could actually kill the fucking things. Even the little ones can absorb so much damage before yielding any spoils. Remember, Jane? Remember at the start how we kept trying to kill them? Mm-hmm. We would all gang up on, like, an imp skeleton for an hour, just clobbering it repeatedly, knocking its bones down, waiting for it to reassemble and keep coming at us, only to finally be rewarded with a shitty pittance of grist. But I guess the silver lining was it forced us to explore ruins more often and scavenge for loot there. So I think we've learned a lot more this way. But it sure makes resources hard to come by, having to get them exclusively from chests and whatnot. Sometimes I wonder if we've been missing out on a really rewarding part of the game by neglecting to build up our houses. Makes you wonder. But it just costs so much. Better to stick to making more practical stuff, don't you think? Hmm. Sometimes I wonder if the heroes had the same problems in their game. Do you think they found an easier way to kill skeletons? Were they just as shameless as us when it came to splurging our precious grist on swanky new duds? Did the same enigmatic bard haunt their game? And if so, which hilarious dead trolls did he throw into the flashy blobs? Mr. Aerosol tells me he knows many things about the heroes because he saw them in action when he was alive. But he won't tell me a thing about them. These troll sprites sure do love keeping their secrets, don't they? <laughs> That's nice, Jake. I'm kind of busy, though. What did you actually want to talk to me about? Actually, why don't we just talk about it tomorrow? Okay, we can talk about that if you insist. Really, Jane, you sure know how to twist a fella's arm. I just wanted to get your take on what you might call my own personal ultimate riddle. It involves Dirk. You don't say. It's true. I haven't seen him in a couple days. I have been laying low for a while, but I just received another series of pushy inquiries from him. Maybe I shouldn't be too hard on the guy, since he was probably just concerned, not having heard from me and all. But I still couldn't help but detect a tone of desperation, like he could sense I may be having doubts. This kind of thing has been all too common, unfortunately. I'm not sure it's going to work anymore. Hmm. He can be so needy. If only he could just relax and trust that I won't spontaneously tire of his company. Although, the irony, I guess, is that his overbearing tendencies are beginning to fulfill his own paranoid prophecy. It's such a shame. We've had so many capital adventures together. I don't know why he has to be like this. He was always an intense fella, but in person. Holy cow. I wonder if it has to do with the fact that he grew up alone in the middle of the ocean. And now he doesn't know how to deal with people without suffocating them. But then again, I grew up under similar circumstances, and I think I turned out pretty much okay socially. At least I hope so. Do you think so, Jane? Hmm. Actually, it just occurred to me. It's funny he didn't mention your party in his text. I'm sure he wouldn't have forgotten. 
He never forgets anything, what with all his calculations and his computerized brain, both figurative and literal. I wonder what his game was. He invited me on an expedition without mention of your party as a potential conflict. If he sensed I could use some space, perhaps he was concerned that if we both showed up to the party it would be awkward? Or maybe he didn't want to mention he was going to the party in case he would spook me away from attending? Ah! Do you see, Jane? This is what his endless machinations do to you! Anything he says could be part of some grand convoluted scheme, and it makes you agonize and boggle and wonder until your brain hurts and you just know it's a battle you can't win. You know what I mean, Jane? Mm-hmm. Do you think I should just bite the bullets and end it? It's probably the right thing to do. Boy, am I not looking forward to that conversation, though. It's going to be a doozy. What did I get myself into here? I think I've made a lot of mistakes, honestly. Not the least of which was getting this shitty tattoo, now that I think about it. Yes, yes, I know we all thought it was a riot at first. I guess it still is, maybe? But lately I've been wondering if it might not have been an act of sound judgement. Can you believe that, Jane? Hmm. I don't know. It's a real pickle I'm in here, but I do feel better just being able to get it off my chest. You are such a good friend, Jane. Always ready to listen to my relationship woes. What a trooper. It never ceases to amaze me how excellent you are at this friendship business. Where would we all be without you? In a way, you really have been the glue holding us all together on our adventure. Gosh, you're a stand-up gal. Oh, which actually reminds me of another thing that's been bugging me about Dirk. He can often be almost hilariously self-absorbed. Don't even get me started on when he starts going off in these long monologues about his philosophical gobbledygook. I'm not sure he actually has much of a filter when it comes to what others regard as interesting points of conversation. Not to rag on the guy too hard, but I guess at times I would just like to see a little more self-awareness from him is all. Jake? Did I tell you what happened on our last expedition together? Jake? I can't remember if I mentioned. Oh man, but thinking back on what happened, it's even more ridiculous in retrospect. Where do I begin? Jake! What? Shut up! Huh? SHUT UP! Uh... Did I say something wrong? Jake! Please! Stop! Talking! I don't- Jake! I said shut up! What? Just shut the fuck up! I caramba. What in tarnation is the matter, Jane? What's the matter? What's the matter? I am sick and- Fucking tired to death of your insufferable, blithering bullshit! Whoa there, you seem really worked up. Maybe we should just calm down and talk through this like sensible adults? Also, you're going kinda heavy on the caps there, aren't you? Sorta of makes it seem like you're shouting, just saying. I am shouting! There are literal shouts of anger coming out of my actual mouth, and they are directed at you! Yikes. Well, okay then. Can you tell me why you're so upset with me? Is it because I forgot your birthday party? Because I do feel awful about that. Oh my god, why are you so clueless? I can't stand it! Really, I feel like a tool about forgetting. You know how I am. I forget stuff. I mean, shucks, Buster. If I knew how to make it up to you, I would. If it ameliorates matters any, I am sighing pretty much the shucksiest Buster of contrition I can manage. It's not about my birthday! The fact that you forgot certainly doesn't help, but that's not it! See, you just don't get it! Oh, and could you please stop saying shucks? Buster! Shucks Buster was my thing, and you stole it! I thought Shucks Buster was sort of our thing? No! It was my thing, but I allowed it to be our thing. Back when you used to give a shit, but now it's just mine, and you can't have it anymore! Um, uh, okay. I suppose I could go with Shoot Buddy or Fudge Jr. <sighs> Or maybe forego an analogous catchphrase altogether. <laughs> but I clearly stepped in it big time with you, and I'd really like to know what I did. Jake, let me 
ask you. Do you even remember the last time we talked? Hmm. Wasn't it a few days ago? No! Try a few weeks ago! And even then, you messaged me just to talk about some stupid shit that happened with Dirk. A tedious gesture which you then saw fit to reprise on my birthday of all days, whilst considerately forgetting about it. And even when I reminded you about it, you still barged ahead with your self-indulgent relationship claptrap anyway! I didn't realize it was so long ago. Sorry about that. Again, all I can say is, where does the time go? I guess I have trouble keeping up with everything I'm supposed to, which it would seem includes personal relationships as much as calendars. I'm not much of a leader of people. Not like you are, Jane. I think when it comes to adventuring, maybe I'm more of a solo act. Which, now that I think about it, might be contributing to my problems with Dirk. Maybe that's part of the reason why I needed some space? Oh, brother, there I go again, blustering about my problems! I guess I see what you mean. But really, if you wanted to talk sooner, then why didn't you get in touch with me? It feels as though I'm always the one to say hello to you lately. Yeah, that's because every single time we chat, you do nothing but talk about yourself! You never ask me how I'm feeling or what I've been up to. You just launch into your romantic problems, and I just listen like an accommodating fool as always. So I just stopped bothering. Why should I subject myself to that repeatedly? You might actually be the most thoughtless, self-centered person I have ever met. I can't believe I used to feel- Huh? Used to feel what? Jake, has it ever occurred to you how I must feel for someone to listen to her friend go on and on about his boyfriend problems when, when all along she... But she just couldn't say it because she blew it and it was too late to... I don't know why I'm bothering to explain this to you, never mind. Now, hold the phone. Jane, I think I may finally understand what's been going on here. In retrospect, I can't believe I've been this blind. You're right, I really can be deplorably thick sometimes. Looking back, I can see how many of our conversations must have been torment for you. You really should have told me how you felt sooner. Yeah, I... I know. If you told me you had the hots for Dirk, I would have backed off without another word. What are friends for? <laughs> Wait... Did I say something dumb again? Ah, oh, consarn it. I think maybe something is getting lost in translation over our respective chat clients. Maybe we should wait until tomorrow and just clear the air face to face at your party? No! You aren't coming to my party! Oh, come on, Jane. Be a sport. You aren't coming to my party because there isn't going to be a party! Go raid some tombs with your boyfriend! Go make out with him, or break up with him, or whatever it is your fickle, selfish heart desires. I am at the end of my rope with you. I am fed up with your stupid movies, and your stupid adventures, and your stupid old-timey charms, and your stupid dashing good looks. Who needs any of it? I say, Jane, before you do anything rash... Oh, will you please just shut the fuck up, Buster? Jane? Yo, uh, Janie? You okay there? I will be peachy fucking keen once I stop this novelty mustache headset into oblivion and not a moment sooner! Janie, uh, that ain't a reasonable thing you said. On contraire, I believe you will find that once this piece of shit has been reduced to subatomic particles, we will all come out smelling like fucking roses. Jane, stop it. Huh? You're upset in Fefeta. Just think of Fefeta is all I'm asking. Poor Fefeta. Hmm. Oh, poor Fefida, my sweet patootie! You and I both know Fefida has had to deal with garbage from jerk-off boys before. So don't give me this poor Fefida crap! <laughs> well, yeah. 
My girl Fefida knows what's up. She been around the D-bag block a time or two. Am I right, Fefida? <laughs> Shit, yes, give me a paw bump. Bump. <laughs> Jane, you want in on this action? Come give us a fistful of sugar. Complete the three-way for max girl power and solidarity against dumb dudes. Janie, jeez, don't leave us hanging here. <sighs> Fine! Jane, that was the piss-poorest paw bump I've ever seen. That was like a negative bump. We were gonna have to bump long and hard into the night to dig us out of this fucking bump hole you dug us into with that tragic bump. <laughs> that bump was like Shakespearean. Makes me want to weep softly and leave a bouquet somewhere. Someone plays a sad trumpet in the distance. Oh look, Fethoda just sniffed a little at how sad that bump was. <laughs> okay, God, I was just trying to cheer you up. Take your mind off whatever the hell that was. You weren't serious about calling off the party, were you? Here, let me just get the chess guys to help put the table back on the roof and maybe salvage the cake out of that sand dune over there. And nope, the chess guys just finished eating it. Let's let's just bake another, okay? No! I was serious! I'm not <sighs> I'm not in the mood for a party anymore. So it sounds like you got jaked. <sighs> oh why yes, that is the face of a girl who just got Englished with extreme prejudice. He was a blockhead and forgot your birthday, didn't he? Oh, I'm sorry, Jane. Yeah, me too. Can we maybe not rehash the whole terrible conversation, though? Yeah, we don't have to. Just maybe try not to hold whatever dumb shit he said against him forever. That's just how the guy is. It's like, he doesn't mean to be a douche, but it's just kind of a byproduct of the whole ridiculous jerk English experience. Like, his dunk-ass shenanigans leave behind a residue that looks like douche and tastes like douche, but it ain't the real thing. Like, douche substitute. Oh, I can't believe it's not douche. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just trying to say not terrible things about him in hopes you don't start hating each other, but I guess this isn't what you want to hear now. Mm. So, yeah, I guess Jake's dumping Dirk soon? <laughs> like the writing wasn't so on the wall with those two from day one. <sighs> Poor Dirk. I wanted to say something to prepare him for that, but never had the heart to bring it up, I guess. What can you do? <laughs> hey, but the uh, silver lining is, I mean, if you can forgive him for shitting on your B-Day and stuff, maybe this is finally your chance to make a play for the J-Man. Eh? Wonk. <laughs> Roxy, please! As if that isn't the furthest thing from my mind right now! I am so done with that whole train of thought! So you really think you're just completely over him? Yes, sirree! If Jake's the rainbow, then just call me a little house from Kansas! Whee! Wait, really? A as in, like, you don't give a shit if he dates anybody, or- uh -huh. I see. Interesting. Ooh! Wait, what? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Nothing. I was just- uh, it was a joke. Was it really? Okay, maybe not a total joke, but still mostly a joke. I'm only trying to... Ugh, I don't know. Roxy, I get you're trying to make me feel better, but a lot of things you're saying here aren't really helping. Do you even realize what you're saying half the time? I think I liked you better when you were drinking. Jane, no. Don't say that. I had a problem. Huh. Okay, yeah, I was way out of line there, and I'm sorry. <sighs> that stupid conversation with Jake just pushed me over some kind of edge, and now I'm feeling really, really distraught. This game is so much more depressing than I thought it would be. Everything is dead and empty and full of graves, and all we're supposed to do is just keep waiting and waiting and waiting but for how much longer? And I still don't know where my dad is, and you still haven't been able to reach Calliope, and what if they're both? And now on top of all of that, I may have permanently destroyed my friendship with Jake, and now... 
Uh, now? I just want to be alone. Jane, wait. I have to go. Where are you going? Home! Jane, abscond. Last scamper. Youth roll. Acrobatic fucking pirouette. Youth roll. Nice abscond. Good lord. All my friends are being disasters. Well, looks like it's just us. Party night with G Cat and Fefida. Fefida? Oh, dang it. Hey, you know I could have used some support there. Where was all that profound shipping expertise when we really needed it? Usually I can barely shut you up, girl. Maybe just clammed up at all the drama. <laughs> uh, you'd have loved that pun. The, the one I just said about the clams. Aw, it's okay. You had enough drama in your lives. You deserve some rest. Good night, sweet princess. So, she capped. I guess that just leaves the two of us. Wow, th this, this is great. You, uh, you gonna behave yourself? Not do anything too, uh, vexing or Cheshire catty? <laughs> I hope. Oh, motherfuck! Jane, Ollie Audi. Ollie's Audi. The Roxy. <laughs> Jane, answer. Crocker. Hey, it's me. Remember me? What the? Haha. <laughs> Oops, no, hold shift, nostalgically! Ha <laughs> Yes! Oh, you have got to be kidding me. You are the absolute last person I want to hear from right now. And the bottom of that list is pretty competitive territory at the moment. Don't be like that, you stupid earth cow! How are we supposed to be becoming friends if you recoil from my olive branch? Like, I'm flailing a withered mummy's severed limb in your direction! I don't want us to become friends! We all thought you were gone for good, and we liked it that way! Please don't tell me you found a second wind of petty trolling in you! Hey! I don't troll! I jeer! Get it right! Trolling is for losers! Losers specifically, who are trolls! <sighs> Whatever. And what's with the ugly green text? Reading your malformed sentence fragments was unpleasant enough as it was. I borrowed it from my sister, and shut up! It looks great, and is no uglier than you, who I can see now with ease, for the record. Whom you can see, moron. And no, you can't. Calliope said you couldn't see us at all in our game session, so I think you're lying. Am I really? When right now, I am looking at a homely female in dumb blue pants, sulking in a grey place, typing on a computer with a strange human face. Oh, dear God, why? My power has grown considerably since I last cheered you. I have made remarkable strides on my sacred journey toward important adulthood on this bullshit planet which used to be your home. I have found many keys and unlocked many holes. And now I can see more and learn more than you could ever fucking dream. How wonderful for you. I don't care how all-seeing and all-powerful you think you are. If your intent is to waste my time with more of your pitiful bullying, you are out of luck because that is exactly not the sort of crap I am in the mood for today. Toodaloo. Wait! I think we got off on the wrong foot. How about we gnaw that one off and start over? I was trying 
to pay you a compliment. Huh? My people aren't meant to like anybody. Get it? I mean, not the way humans do. We don't have the human emotion called love. And we spontaneously start mashing keys when we are forced to even type the word. All our relationships are dictated by the miracle of hatred. So when I use bad words toward you, that's just me saying things to try to know you better. Like, socially. <laughs> As a, a friend. <laughs> so, when I say you're ugly, which you actually are, I mean that from my perspective of being normal and not a shitty alien. To say that you are actually attractive in an unpleasant way to my brain. Huh. Nope, that makes very little sense. Fuck! Try using your supposedly better smartness than mine and think somewhat laterally about, like, fucking culture that isn't yours, you dumb bitch. Yes, I see it all too clearly now. You're really quite the charmer. No, come on. Dumb bitch is another great compliment. In the same vein as that which I just described, it's a term of endearment. <laughs> I used to talk about girls who, in my view, have managed to avoid being utterly beneath my personal acknowledgement? This isn't complicated. Uh-huh. So you're actually trying to claim that you find me attractive from the alleged bad-means-good point of view of your hate-driven species? Definitely! I'm not joking around, Crocker. I've unlocked a bunch of your screams and spent a lot of time watching you while thinking... Just the dirtiest thoughts. <laughs> Ew, you pig! The other female, too? Let's not forget your squad's backup, bitch. How nasty is she? Just so foul. And the things you get up to with one another. Oh my. Need I even cite the altercation with your puffy slumber loaves? Excuse me? My compliments in particular on your colorful undergarments while bouncing up and down on the soft human sarswapagus. Oh, that's just great. The one time we have a generic girly pillow fight and it turns out some pervert was watching us. I think I need a shower, assuming I can ever take one again in peace. Don't worry, you can't. But seriously, Jane. Can I call you Jane? Bitch, listen. You are one grotty harlot. Which means good and bad things to me. Let's remember. When I unlocked you, I don't know. Maybe I've changed? Or maybe just you, since you turned older. But you've really filled out since I last saw you before. What? Really? Hell yes! I do enjoy a meaty bitch with a little clout. What do you mean exactly by clout? Oh, I think you know. When the physical proportions of the bitch kind of jut out exuberantly. Do you mean my... Uh, why am I even having this conversation? I just have a weak spot for... The above average heft of your parts, which wobble the most. Now do something nauseating for me to watch. I want to see a tawdry act of hardcore schmaltz. See that rock over there? Pretend it is the other insolent bitch. Act a little nervous. With your idle hand, uh, graze one of your more bulbous locations, incidentally. And then ask the rock if it wants to... Fall in love. Ooh. What? No! Are you insane? I don't care where you are or whatever the hell it is you unlocked to spy on me. You aren't allowed to sit there all day leering at my boobs. Your what? My... What? Wait, what were you talking about? No, uh, tell me what those things you said are. I'm so enticed. Screw you! 
Tell me what you were getting at with all that. The stuff about clout and my bulbous locations. I was just saying my taste prefers when the buxom shrew's physique puts a healthy dent in space-time. Space-time? I like how salty it is when a bitch grows out of her skeletal phase and her frame really begins to challenge the horizontal dimensions. What? When the female rum starts getting more mileage out of its wideness attribute, more bang for its boon buck, it excites me better when bitches punish the ground with each megalithic footstep. Shut up! I am not fat! Jane, bitch, I have new orders. You were stripped in a scanty pair of party pants and the cloth chest piece, which you wear under those plain rags. Then find a knotty patch of mud and roll around in the mud like an earth pig, flaunting for me your slippery and swollen porcine physicality. And maybe grunt some decadent poems through your snout about some shit face you adore. Oh, yes, that would be wretched. Go fuck yourself. Wait, don't shut me out. Remember what I said about our different cultures or whatever? Have a fucking open mind, Jane. I made you a present for your birthday, whatever that actually is. See how I'm making an effort to understand your customs? Meet me half of the goddamn way. Oh, cripes, what is it? Ooh, a sublime artistic portrait. Remember how I said my power was growing with each day? This applies as well to my prowess as a draftsman. Oh, goodness, no, you poor delusional thing. I don't care what progress you think you've made. You will never be a good artist, dear. Horse shit! My illustration is stunning. It is nearly a photographic representation of your odious milkshake. Now park the industrial load of freight you declare a bottom and feast your eyes on my fucking excellence. Aha! Ugh. I believe I have chosen the perfect shape for you. It is described in certain circles knowledgeable of the arts as a circle. I am very pleased with how faithfully it has captured the obscene rotundity of your magnificent carriage. Truly a spitting image of the cracker bitch. Now listen carefully. You may learn something. The masterpiece aficionado will notice how I achieved this highly advanced and difficult shape. What most gifted artisans will tell you is that circles are basically fucking impossible to draw. Trust me, it's like a paradox. A shape without angles? What? So I fucking cheated. I navigated the irrational perimeter by making a lot of easily understandable, totally logical marks, forming a whole bunch of little right angles. The cheating part happens when I do this a lot. So it goes in a round direction. This one came out well, I think, but there's room to improve. I have theorized that if I keep making bogus circles like this, while drawing more and more angles, but smaller, so small that you start can't seeing them, that the illusion of the circle will be complete and people will believe in the fake circle like a bunch of suckers. I bet nobody has thought of that circle strategy. I think I'm the first at this idea and best at it already. People think I'm dumb, especially the voice in my head. And they may be right about me being dumb, but when it comes to the special way I do things, which is always actually the perfect way, I am a genius! <laughs> that is the most pointless and incomprehensible load of drivel I have ever read. Your portrait is every bit as abysmal as I was expecting. And for the last time, I am not fat! I think your claims of attraction to heavy-set women, which you present as flattery, is an obvious ruse to get me to feel insecure about my appearance. And it isn't going to work! Oink! Shut your stupid face! Ugh, this birthday is so awful, I can't stand it! Why is everyone treating me like shit today? What did I do to deserve this? You were... Uh... 
Wait! What's the conjugation associated with human birth? Is it human birth? Hmm. You are human birth. Shut up! I am done humoring your perverted adolescent mind games. Tell me what happened to Calliope! Calliope! We want you back! Please come back and spare us from this lecherous nincompoop! Calliope! Why doesn't this work? <laughs> Saying her name only wakes her up if she's alive! So your hog face can snort the dirty syllables all at once. Hell, I will even give you a hand. Calliope! Wake up, sis! <laughs> Whoops! She can't! The bitch is dead! I don't believe you! No, it's true! I got somebody to stab her a lot. Then, I stole her blood for my letters. No! That can't be true! I refuse to believe even you would do something so terrible! Jane, bitch! Your preposterous female emotions are going earth bananas again! Settle down and listen to boy reason. Do not make me demonstrate the veracity of my facts yet again. That saccharine tramp is such a goner. She's never coming back. Just like your dapper human guardian. What? What do you know about my father? Where is he? He's fucking dead is where. You're lying again. Tell me what you know. God, I'm trying to. My facts are having difficulty penetrating your hysterical attitude. Listen to me very close. He was captured by an agent soon after you began your quest. He was then put in jail on Durs. Okay, so he's on Durs then? Bitch, you aren't paying attention. Do you know anything about the prison system on Durs? It isn't like the soft time you do on Prospect. I bet you would never spend any time in the joke they call a slammer there let alone on Durs. And I suppose you have? I was not very well behaved. I did more than my share of time. Changed to the wall of a cell. <laughs> like I wasn't so used to that. I was like, do your worst. And then they did. Dursites do not treat their prisoners good, to say the least. I was only able to survive the brutality due to my exceptional constitution and to some extent my ability to enjoy anguish but your pathetic frail human dad is a different story there is no doubt at all that he is dead by now no don't say that shut up you really should believe me i have unlocked many of his screens just like yours you should see how they treated him. The horror he experienced must be difficult for a human girl to imagine. Perhaps I should capture one of the visuals and show you firsthand? You bastard! I said shut up! His agony was magnificent and very long-lasting. You see, he was a VIP, a very important prisoner. So they gave him special treatment. Oh, under such cruel circumstances, I believe he would have traded his favorite hat for a swift end to his hilarious suffering. Stop it! But it was so wonderful and great to watch. Between your father's demise and his daughter's epic posterior looming large on my video displays, I really must thank your entire family for hours of scandalous enjoyment. Fuck you! He's not dead! My dad's fine! I'm not fat! And I hate you! I'm never talking to you again! And stop watching me! Jane, keep abscondo. <laughs> nice abscond. Two times combo. Diamonds Droog. Examine sleazy Dursite rag. Let's see what's in the news today. 
No surprise here. The Archagent is dominating the headlines yet again. Already approaching day 154 of this debacle. It's a big day for your kingdom. Hard to believe it's here already. Time sure flies when you're being smooth and well-dressed. The article covers the usual tedious politics surrounding the negotiation of his release. After weeks of posturing and grandstanding, Prospect's terms have been bargained down to a polite apology signed by the Condess herself. Or those were the terms you were last aware of. You check to see if there have been any further developments. Yeah, just as you thought. She refused those terms. Prospect then countered with a new offer. The apology no longer has to be polite. No way she cottons to that proposal either. It's quite obvious to you what's going on here. The White Queen was never really taking this negotiation seriously. She's been submitting frivolous proposals which she knows perfectly well the Condess will refuse on principle, daring her in front of the whole kingdom to swallow just an ounce of pride to get her agent back. This makes her look petty in the tabloids if she refuses, which was always inevitable. Because as everyone knows, a queen is a vain creature. Even alien sea queens. And you thought the kingdoms were locked in a stalemate before the new management took over. The press has run the story so far into the ground you can barely bring yourself to keep up with it anymore. Sensationalism at its finest. Not that you're really itching to see Noir get his old job back. Talk about a high-strung boss. Time in the clink should do him good. Like a forced vacation, with accommodations nearly on par with a five-star hotel on Durst. Frankly, things run much smoother around here without him blowing a gasket every other day. Though you will say you really could use his expertise as a pencil pusher. You never knew anyone who could file paperwork quite like Noir. Sure, he complained bitterly about his desk job, but in truth, he was always a reluctant savant of bureaucratic procedure and red tape. Now you're getting buried in all these damn tax forms and parking tickets. Maybe you should have them shuttled to his jail cell on Prospect so he can catch up. You have a feeling the Prospician authorities would be willing to oblige. Actually, that's such a good idea. I can't believe you didn't think of it sooner. You'll have to get the droll on that pronto. Diamonds Droog. Observe Nobles. You step over the your cubicle of fenestrated walls, which you had replaced since the prince trashed the old ones. You ordered the droll to sneak off to one of their worlds and whip up some fresh ones with a few alchemical upgrades while he was at it. The droll isn't really the sharpest tool in the shed, but he certainly is the most versatile. Also the most eager to please. If you have to watch his happy umbrella dance one more time, you swear to God. That was a black day for Durst. When the prince went rogue. Well, not rogue. That's a bad choice of words. Why did the damn moon girl have to be a rogue? Corners you into that pun every time. And it wasn't really a black day either, per se, since on Durst a black day is actually a good day. Everyone's a pretty big fan of black around these parts. The point is, everything went to shit. You like to think you taught those seditious brats a lesson, though. What with the miles, their inescapability, etc. And it's a good thing you taught them a lesson when you did. Because the next day, the Condes had new orders for all agents. Engaging the nobles was thereafter strictly forbidden. No more sabotage, assassination attempts, any of that good stuff. Not until the heiress is wriggling day. Then all bets are off. Who's the heiress and what's a wriggling day, you ask? The heiress is the maid. Okay, you said. And her wriggling day? That's just her birthday, but phrased an alien. Like the anniversary of the day she was spawned. With cake and all that jazz. Come on, use your brain. Alright, got it, you said. Anyway, that's tomorrow. Your guess is the orders came down from her boss, who, from what you've gathered, is even more of a head case than your presently incarcerated superior. When she starts kicking up a fuss, yelling at people, 
forking any poor slob unfortunate enough to make a misstep while grooming her hair. You know too well that's the frustration of an exasperated first officer. Would almost make you feel sympathy for the witch if you, like she, weren't clinically psychopathic. She's never copped to it, but you just know she's got some schemes on the side. Every good right hand is gonna have something up its sleeve. Some sort of contingency plan the boss doesn't know about. Trust you on that one. She's cooking something. And it probably has something to do with the new prisoner she reeled in. You don't know what she wants with the girl yet, but she's always got something cooking. Or baking. Whatever. The point is, the woman spends a lot of time in the kitchen. Diamonds Droog. Check on prisoner. Speaking of the new prisoner, you wonder how the old one is doing. You're not gonna check on the new one. She's out of your jurisdiction. Like you said, the witch has her schemes. Whatever they are, you're gonna leave that alone. You're more curious about the status of the fellow you captured 153 days ago. You take a stroll through the Durst Penitentiary. This is where the Gen Pop is housed. For inmates, life is usually unpleasant and short down here. But the moment you laid eyes on the human prisoner, you knew you could never in good conscience lock him up in the dungeons and gulags with the common thieves, tax cheats, and parking fee delinquents. That would be a crime worse than those committed by all the inmates combined. No. A man of such distinction and strong fashion sense needed special accommodations. A cell reserved for very important prisoners. Diamond's Droog. Proceed to solitary confinement suite. Going up. The prisoner appears to be doing well. You ask if you can get him anything. Coffee? A newspaper? Additional smoking apparatus? He indicates that since he lost his wallet, he's been running low on pipe tobacco. You say you'll see to it at once. While this is a maximum security suite that is virtually impossible to escape from, you've made it clear to all personnel that anyone who harms a hair on this man's head will have to answer to you. They are all very fortunate that his head doesn't seem to have any. God damn, he is good at shaving. You are not afraid to admit your envy when it comes to his prowess with a straight edge. Not even to speak of his natural ability to grow whiskers in the first place. The lucky stiff. Diamonds Droog. Ask what prisoner is doing. No need to ask. You can plainly see he's conducting some rather serious business with his mobile device. The network restricts access to within Dirks only, so he can't contact the nobles and do anything sneaky. But, at his request, you have set up a kingdom-wide network to trade online tips with other Dirks sites pertaining to his interests, notably fashion. In the weeks since his arrest, the captive has become something of a celebrity on Dirks. His impeccable sense of business-like attire has taken the kingdom by storm, and now trends feverishly among social networking groups. Okay, there's only one social networking group, but it's trending feverishly in that one. You can't say that you've been totally impervious to the craze yourself, nor can you say you weren't shamelessly complicit in promoting it. Hell, you can't even say you didn't mandate certain dress code modifications throughout the kingdom. Enforced under the penalty of death. Nope. You can't really say you can say any of that stuff. Help! Need help! State business. Hmm? I'm very concerned. Tell me what is wrong. Yes, Hatlecker. We are here for you. I sat on my favorite hat. <gasps> oh! This is not a black day for you. My condolences. It was an accident. A frayed hat is ruined. Please advise. Are at least socks okay? Yes, socks are okay. Did you sit on socks too? No, did not sit on socks. 
I do not think sitting on socks would be problem, though. No, it is doubtful. Fair enough. Need more information before can advise. Please state your weight. Agreed. Exactly how much vertical pressure was applied to top of the hat? Report extent of damage to hat. Not sure. Hat in bad shape. Does not resemble hat much anymore. Considerably less handsome. More like rumpled head object now. Attempt to rectify hat integrity. Use same blunt instrument which got you into mess in first place. Thank you for advice. Do you mean my bottom? Yes. Yes, agree with one dapper black shell. Unsit on hat. Can one unsit on a hat? Maybe. I don't know. Turn hat upside down, then sit on hat? Yes. Agree with chopped about duds. Sit on upside down hat to unrumple. Hat liker, these men are leading you astray. Sitting on the hat again will only cause it further damage. This will be the case even if the rumpled hat is inverted? Yes. This will be the case regardless of the hat's orientation. Greatly respect Pipefan413's knowledge of finery. I endorse his warning. Me too. So do I. On Pipefan413's recommendation, I withdraw my motion to unsit on the hat. One more socks changes status to apologetic. Okay, I am now refraining from unsitting on hat. Other ideas? Yes. Go on, chuffed about duds. Do you suppose it is possible that rumpled head object may have intrinsic value? I do not understand. Thinking outside the shell here. Perhaps bring rumpled object to Haberdasher for appraisal? You suspect damage from bottom has caused Hat to appreciate? Fascinating point of speculation. I wonder... If that is case, perhaps sitting on Hat has released fashionable properties, heretofore concealed by unrumpled condition? You are suggesting the damaged Hat will look more dapper? It is a possibility. Oh. What if Hatlaker struts in public wearing new rumpled head object with pride? What if Hatlaker begins new fashion sensation? What an exciting thing that would be! I want to be popular and famous, but I do not think I have the courage. What if you were to have company in wearing a damaged hat? Yes, maybe I will sit on my favorite hat as well. Yes, me too. Let us all create rumpled head objects. Wear proudly. I cannot condone this activity, John. Why not, Pipe Band 413? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not, Pipe Band 413? Why not? Incinerate the damaged hat. Do not ever wear such a thing in public. <gasps> Burn the hat! Burn the hat! Burn it! Burn the rumpled hat! I am burning the hat! Sitting on the hat was terrible! Burn all of rumpled hats! They aren't dapper at all! Burn the mistake with fire! Yo, I can't deal with this Chrissy hat chat no more. Public works my ass, what a waste of royal gold. Chuffed about duds changes status to bowing. One more socks changes status to bowing. No need for pants thanks changes status to bowing. Finery fiend changes status to bowing. Hat liker changes status to bowing. One dapper black shell changes status to bowing. This is what I get for letting all proper dudes run shit instead of nasty clowns? The dignitary changes status to doffing hat. I want my ring back, motherfucker.